and, and the tools that they use to give each other numbers and how they might be somewhat problematic. After that, we will go into a deep dive to actually figure out how to fix these problems. So if you have not yet registered for the gene deep dive, Jean is right there. <laughs> and you can go to her and she will help you. Without further ado, let's talk about association members, young association members, what folks do. I'm going to be relying on the report that just came out, the NALA Association Report, <coughs> benchmarking to what associations typically do. So it's a major report, very credible. Now, as you can see from the report, the engaging young professionals is one of the top three challenges for associations at home, communicating number benefits effectively and generating non user revenue. Now, how many of you here who are in association leadership positions? believe that for you, engaging young members is one of the top three priorities. Okay. So about something like just over half. Great. So let's talk about what young members actually need, what they want, and how you can engage them effectively. Now for context, I helped many associations with projects in this area and I did a number of focus groups for young people as well as surveys. The next part is about what the typical young association professional actually wants and where they're coming from, what their feelings are, what their emotions are, what their beliefs are. Young members, of course, we're talking about late millennials, GNCs, they're the future of associations. That's where your value from associations lies. The young members are have the most like and value to prove. Let's talk about what position they find themselves in, what kind of emotions they experience. A very common emotion is the solution, unfortunately, for these young members, because they have a tough financial situation. So with inflation, heard back, and the pandemic has not been great for young members that come out of college into the pandemic. They have a lot of struggle over just sitting here at the table talking about how people, how young members, how young folks want perhaps more money than associations are willing to offer as staff. The same thing happens as members, young members, they have trouble finding jobs that are satisfying to them. So they are the solution in many ways. Now, but not simply with their finances, but also pensions with older generations. Because the young members who are coming up now have a lot of differences with their bosses, with their supervisors, partially because these young members are digital natives. They're very comfortable working, for example, remote things. We're just talking at the table here about how some people who are from older generations are less comfortable working remote. And there are many other dynamics that come out of that. But that's just one example. Another example is that you're finding that older people are less likely to retire than they were before. So if you're looking at surveys, people are staying in their jobs quite a bit longer and young people are finding that frustrating. <laughs> so that is a big challenge, another challenge with older members. Now, they're also feeling frustrated into the perception of social problems and social problems that aren't being addressed to their satisfaction. Social problems around diversity and inclusion, around social justice, including climate justice, those are things that they are really concerned about. So these are three areas where they're feeling a lot of solutions, a lot of challenges. What they want is personal meaning and achievement. That's what they're going for, personal meaning and achievement. That's what's really important. And we'll dig into what that means. But the first thing to think about is what associations are actually typically offering. Associations offer belonging. But most young people, that's not what they're seeking. Belonging is what the previous generations were looking for. They want the connection, they want the belonging, they want that community. But young people are much less likely to look for that. They look for value for career, that's part of their personal being and achievement. They also look for social impact. And social impact includes, as I mentioned, diversity inclusion, and includes social justice, including climate justice. So that's really important to know and to think about. There is a disconnect between what many associations are offering young members and what young members actually want. So that's a big challenge. And that's something that you want to be thinking about what you're actually selling, what are you offering young people? and to offer them what they actually want in associations. Now, when I do this 
surveys, presentations of group office groups, and bring this information to the leadership, to the board members. There are often some you know, a little bit grumpy older, older board members who say, well, what do, why should I care what they feel, right? They should just do what I did and you know, go through my career path, you know, have that as a feeling. So that's a feeling that many old, uh, older board members tell me <laughs> in my presentations. Uh, they tell them that they are falling into a typical judgment error called the empathy gap, where they really underestimate the emotions, the importance of emotions of other people. So they underestimate the intensity and impact of these young people's emotions. Now, the empathy gap is one of these dangerous cognitive biases. So it's an area of expertise, behavioral science. These are the typical mistakes you make as human beings because of how our mind is wired. So cognitive biases. And the empathy gap is one. And we're going to go in depth in more questions about what cognitive biases are. But it's really important to understand that it's hard to feel empathy for those who are junior to us, for those who we feel are junior to us, lower status to us, and not part of our engagement. And young people usually belong to both of those junior to us and not part of our age. It's especially hard to feel empathy for them. But if you want to engage them, you need to be empathetic for them. You need to care about what they feel, and you need to actually connect with them effectively. So we need to remember, again, that young members are the future of associations. That's where the lifetime value of associations actually lies in young members. And if you don't get them early, you know what? Research shows that if they don't join an association in the first three years after college, they're very unlikely to join an association after that. So you need to get them as early as possible. But if you get them early and get them into an association early, and you get, they get to stay past the first year, they're quite likely to stay after that. So you really need to focus on these young members, target them, get them into an association early. But there's the empathy gap, as I told you. And we can see this from the report. So members of groups most likely to receive a customized experience. New members, over two thirds of all associations give substantial customized experience to new members. Right, that's understandable. Then the next group is member category for affiliates, associates, and so on. They get just under a third, two thirds give special treatment to them, customized focus. The next is regional chapter specific, but less than half of associations give a customized focus treatment to young people. And that's a serious problem because you're falling into the sympathy gap. If you're offering belonging to every one of your members, but young people want career impact and social impact, and don't care so much about belonging, they want the personal meaning and achievement, well, they're going to be disenchanted and disillusioned. So that's a problem. Now, let's talk about another issue. So we're talking about how the sympathy gap, how it's important to care about young people and engage them effectively. Let's talk about communication, engaging with them. How effective are you at communicating and engaging with your members? So there's another dangerous judgment that are these device is called the delusion of transparency. It's the delusion of transparency. That has to do with the fact that we tend to be much less good than we feel we are at communicating to people, at conveying our messages to them, and conveying our intentions to them. So our intentions are what we feel, our beliefs, our values, and our messages is that that content of what we're actually saying. We tend to be much worse than we feel unfortunately. So that is the problem for us in communicating to others. And so we need to think about how do we address that problem, this communication gap and this conveying of intentions. We're also much worse than we feel at actually reading other people reading their messages, what they're trying to tell us, and reading what their intentions are. And so I want to talk about that uh, delusion of transparency, how it comes out, and how each associations actually engage with young people. This is another part of the report showing what associations do in their social media, which is an important tool of engagement. Right? So we see that associations this year the overwhelming majority of associations have drawn, but nearly two thirds of associations use LinkedIn. Then just below that is Facebook and then Twitter. So about half, just under half use Twitter. Then we have YouTube, just over a third using YouTube. Then you know, the online community, then Instagram, about a third, then Vimeo, 20%, and 
and picked up at 10% and then so on down. It's been the rest of the of fewer numbers. Now, how well do you think that aligns with the kind of social media that comes before you? <laughs> I see people shaking their heads. <laughs> shaking your head is the right answer. <laughs> so, let's see what young people are doing. Young people, the most popular is YouTube by far. Then TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. I mean, you probably heard that TikTok, they're actually using TikTok. It's, very, it's not, not all young people use TikTok, but the ones who use it use it for a longer time than use other social media platforms. Not, not representative here, but it's important. Now, why do you think these four are the top and by Facebook and so on are below? What unites these top four platforms? Video. Video, excellent. That's the favorite way of engaging for young people, video. So if you're not producing video content, you're not, you're not engaging your people. <laughs> That's the reality. Video content is what really is the driver of engagement for young people. So if you're trying to engage young people, you need to be working on your video game very well. Now, you might see one social media platform missing. That's LinkedIn, mm -hmm. the most commonly and popular used platform among associations. Now, why is it this? So here's new research by Dixon B. Kublin, chosen the Gen Z rarely used LinkedIn. Over 50% of young adults in the US, they have a US, they have a LinkedIn account, but they almost never use it. <laughs> almost, almost never use it. Only 2% are heavy users, power users. They, those accounts were created by parents, encouraged by parents, or class, or something like that, in college. And then young people are treating LinkedIn just as a job board. <laughs> they just go in and out, they don't engage, it's very transactional, they treat it as any other job board. And they don't think of LinkedIn even as a social media. For them, it's a job board. So it's really important to know that if you're thinking of LinkedIn as social media, they're not. They're not using LinkedIn, they're not engaging with LinkedIn. The older members will be, but not young. It's very important to realize kind of one illusion of truth, one illusion of transparency, like this how associations are trying to reach young members. So let's talk about more broadly about the tactics that associations are using to reach young members. Which of the following are associations using for the support? So the invitation to participate in volunteer committees is over half of them are doing just over half. Then events geared for young professional development are under half. Family communication, mentoring programs, two tips, financial assistance, and so on. It's even the board and professional group. So that's what other associations are doing. That's the average of what is happening with associations. Now, let's talk about each of these in turn and see how they line up against what should be happening. Volunteer committee. That's great for older people, for older generations who seem you all. That's not what younger people are. They are not looking for below. So that's really important to understand. These associations, over half of the associations, this is the most popular way of trying to reach young people. But this is not what young people are looking for over long speaking. So this is a problem. Great for previous generations, not for Gen Z or millennials. Let's talk about the next events. Educational, professional development events. These are a little bit better, but only somewhat relevant for young people. They have a small career. The main use of them is for career. And they don't like in person education. Whereas many, many of these events are in person increasingly after the pandemic, especially many, many associations are transitioning to only in person events. That's the problem because that's not what young people want. They, with the impact of the pandemic, they have really focused on virtual events. They prefer webinars, they prefer asynchronous online courses, so especially synchronous online courses with webinars as well, those are things that they pay for. And they have difficulty networking in person. That's something that's very, very hard for people who are for our age to grasp, that young people have a lot of difficulty networking in person. They much prefer to network virtually. And it feels kind of rid ridiculous to us, I don't know what the right word is. It feels very strange. It's very hard to feel empathetic for young people who don't like in person networking and who just want to do virtual networking. But that's the reality. I mean, that's what focus group tells us, that that's what surveys tell us. That's what they want. And so this is a problem. They much prefer to network in virtual. 
So this is important for you. Now, next one. Targeted communication, of course, that benefits you, not them, just to be clear. Mentoring programs. Those have some value. That's definitely important for you. So these can be beneficial, but you want to think about how you're setting them. I've seen many associations set them up in a way that's not very helpful. So you want to think about how you're setting them up. Mentors usually offer mentoring the way that they were mentored, not the way that young people actually want to be mentored. So I'll give you an example of an association that I help make a transition to mentoring program. So we discovered a problematic mistake. Here's what was happening. This association was offering young people mentoring in the form of one long-term mentor who was going to be continuously mentored. But what we saw was that we did surveys on this, we saw the fact that young people want it. They didn't want that long-term one relationship with someone. They wanted expertise-based mentoring from the, an expert on the specific question where they had the actual issue that they wanted to address. So this was a, a real disconnect of where young members weren't getting what they wanted. And that's why the mentoring program was not very popular. <laughs> Um, young members. So we set this up, we changed it. So we had to redo the whole mentoring program to actually target young members with what they want, which was one off mentoring from experts who had expertise on the question that they wanted to mentor. And that really engaged young people much better. So that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about. That's exactly Now, financial assistance and scholarships obviously beneficial. So we don't need to talk about that in more depth. See on the board. That's only useful if the young member is actually active, if they organize events for young people. Otherwise, it's kind of perceived by young people as tokenism. You don't want it to be perceived as tokenism. You want someone to be active and organizing things. Now, young professional groups, definitely good. That's valuable because they help organize the kind of events that young people want. Virtual events, in-person networking, career impact, but virtual events especially. So a few associations use them as events. Yeah, just so under third, use these use these events. I want to point out that none of these are actually geared toward social impact. And social impact, impact on society, is something that's young people list this as like their number to desire. This is critical. Nothing on diversity inclusion, nothing on social justice. So these are very important to young people. That's something that associations are missing out. So Jared mentioned that our, I had a op-ed in the Columbus discussion today on how Adidas took way too long in dropping Kanye West, right? Now, uh, think about what happened there. That was an obvious opportunity for associations to put out a statement that I support Jewish people. That's a non-controversial statement. It's a statement that would get them a lot of support. How many associations actually put out a statement about that? It's not supporting you. I'm, if you raise your hand, if you did, that'd be wonderful. It's something that there are so many opportunities every day to make an impact on young people. And so this is something I want you to be thinking about. So I would like you to turn to the person next to you and just talk for a minute about some of the ideas that you're taking away from this presentation before we get to the next slide. Thank you. You said you were a professor at OSU. You, uh, you're, are you currently or were you a professor at OSU? I can tell you kind of understand young people pretty well. It's good to hear.
And then, all right, everyone. The discussions which continue to be in the group are in the second half of the two guys. Again, the two guys, CG. <laughs> all right. What are some of the insights that you're taking away? Some insights. Yeah. yeah. It's the it's the it's like the parking lot. Solve that problem. Thank you. Okay, folks, folks. Okay. And I like to see. Um I heard our discussion and we kind of have the same thought at the same time is that sometimes you have to be careful when you speak out because you inadvertently become a target of somebody else's opinion rather than acting like rather than it just being that mm -hmm. and I don't I work for a public university sure so nothing comes out I mean anyone's opinion ever but yep. but I mean you know you kind of have to say back rather than well when you say something I hear you when you say something like I stand for Jewish people that's an opinion uh, but it's one that's not really controversial in this context. Well, we talked about maybe making the message more of anti-Semitism or targeting anyone for any reason as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that's kind of the more factual and you're not, you're not inviting an argument. Sure. That's another way of saying the same thing. Right. Yes, absolutely. And maybe a less opinionated sound. I, I, I use the phrase, I stand with young people just because that's the phrase that was mm -hmm. hashtag. So that was, sorry, well, I said, sorry, I stand with Jewish people. That, that was the hashtag that's spreading on social media. So if you're doing something on social media, that's the hashtag you use. So you would still use the hashtag. Okay. I have a statement against anti-Semitism, hashtag against the Hashtags, they're a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, come on. Oh, oh. How many this is so I would just say at our table, one, looking around the room, we don't really have any I can identify as part of the group you're talking about. Right. Exactly. So, Young people prefer to be uh, doing virtual <laughs> <shots. laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, at our table, like, uh, you know, as Gen X, really not that interested in being personal parts of the association, you know, or for the association, but outside of work, not reaching out. Uh, and that's even higher than the eighth grade girl. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, that was interesting. Yep. Well, not belonging, right? This is Korean, like social. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Yes, Jim. Yes, Jim. You made that comment about that. And mm -hmm. how, you know, we think we have more than we do. And, you know, and, and I think the flip side of that is young people are very intuitive. Yeah. So they know when we're not having empathy for yeah. other and they are going to be in different spaces. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good just to be cognizant mm -hmm. of that as you're approaching. And I'm a parent of young adults. So you know, it's having that, being, being cognizant of the fact that, you know, maybe what I didn't find important at that age, or maybe it didn't touch me at that age, it's going to be very different. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And to add, I think the important thing is that you try. It's like it's hard to self generate empathy, but it's important to try. So, you might, young people will feel that you're trying, or at least trying, right? You might not be the best at using TikTok, but you're trying. You're, you're at least making that much better than that. All right. So, before we get to the key takeaways, your feedback and key resources. So, you'll see a form by you so that you'll fill out. You'll get a copy of my of this PowerPoint and the other PowerPoint for the in that tag if you want to stay for that. So free digital copy of my best selling book, The Blind Spots Be Famous, on this topic, how to engage with people effectively. Then free potion for the first three payments. And so you'll have a few fill out the feedback form, please. If you are watching the recording later, you can fill out the form at the link tinyurl.com forward slash D events. So hang your all some forward slash E A E. So please go ahead, take a minute to allow the feedback. <laughs> <laughs> 
Does anyone need a pen? Jean can help out if anyone needs a pen, just raise your hand. I have them as well. If you want the deeper dive, you don't even have to use the soil. See how easy we've made it? <clears throat> Yes. I just say it would be fun to hear if there's others in the room who are doing some, because obviously, you know, we have young professional involvement in our organizations, maybe on safety as well as our own, whether associations or hotels, community space, we're all trying to reach people. Um, and there's so much competition for resources and that. So, I don't know if there's other thoughts out there, some fun things people are doing. We'll talk about that in the deep dive. Okay. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay. Well, I can't remind you. Well, because I have how many people are going to fix the last time. Stop. 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 Young members, again, remember what they want is personal meaning of, and achievement. That means career impact and social impact, not belonging to the overwhelming majority of them. Avoid the empathy gap. It's very easy to not sufficiently empathize with young people. It's focus on their emotions, not what you feel, focus on what they feel, because you're trying to engage them. The deep illusion of transparency. It's very easy to feel that we are communicating effectively both the content of our messages and what we are intending to say, but we actually are less effective than we think we are. We know, you now know the biases in your young member engagement. In the afternoon session, the deep dive, we'll talk about how to fix Again, see Jean, if you haven't seen her yet, so you can still <laughs> register. Now it's your turn. Go out, make it happen. You know this. I hope to see you, make, have a great effort. So please go ahead. Make it happen. Thank you, Jerry. I think we have probably all learned about 10 different things we could do differently. You won't, however, be seeing me doing any TikTok dances. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs>